What are a lot of YouTubers getting wrong about the MacBook Air M2 when they're reviewing it? Well, let me ask you a question. When you look at, let's say, a Toyota Prius car review, do you see this being put on a Formula One track? Do you see it being raced against a Formula One car or a Lamborghini or a Porsche or a Ferrari? No, you don't. Why? Because the car was never designed to be that kind of car. So then why are so many YouTubers out there trying to make a MacBook Air M2 a pro machine and handle pro types of content when it was never designed to be that. I get why they're doing it. It's clicks, it's engagement, it's viewership. This is how YouTubers make money is the more people that watch the videos, the more money they make from advertising, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I understand that. But what happens is, is that the average consumer who doesn't understand the context and how these reviews are being put together, get these keywords. Oh, it overheats. Oh, it throttles. It's a little slow. Oh, the hard drive at 256 gigabyte version, the base model, it's not fast. But do they understand the context? And a lot of people don't. I've asked a lot of friends. I've asked people that aren't even tech heads. And they were like, is the MacBook Air even worth getting? Because I'm hearing a lot of complaints about it. I'm like, what complaints? I've been using it for the past few weeks. It's awesome for what I'm using it for. And stick around to the end of this video where I'll show you the configuration I would go for for the MacBook Air if I'm just using it as a daily machine without photo and video editing. Now in my studio, I'm powered up with a MacBook Pro 16 inch M1 Max, almost maxed out, needs a little bit more RAM, but almost there. I've got an ISO 27 inch monitor that I'm um, borrowing to test out here. I'm recording this on a red Komodo from a friend of mine, Peter Choi, 6K. I'm gonna be processing that in Final Cut. Audio is going into Adobe Audition for my Zoom F6. I've got a lot of things I'm doing in this video that's being powered by this MacBook Pro. I'm not gonna do that with this MacBook Air. Why? It probably is not gonna handle it, okay? Especially red footage, it's not gonna handle it. Now, it doesn't have a fan, it will throttle, it will slow down when you're pushing into that extreme. But if I'm just gonna be browsing the web, answering emails, watching videos on YouTube, Netflix, Disney Plus, I don't need any of that. This is more than adequate. And that's why I wanna to talk to you guys today about, look, if you're looking for a basic laptop and you wanna get an Apple laptop, because they're pretty, they're great, they're well-made, the software is fantastic, they sync up to your iPhone and to your iPad, I get it. This is a really nice machine. The updates to this Air are fantastic. The better display, the better webcam on this now. You've got more ports because you have a MagSafe attachment to it so you can charge via that way. It's sleeker, it's lighter, it's thinner. I mean, I kind of, I'm nostalgic. I like the original design a little bit, that angular design. When Steve Jobs pulled it out of the envelope, that was awesome. But I get it, we have to evolve and this is not too bad. I got the Starlight version here. We're pretty much maxed out on our review set and I would opt for a lighter color because the darker colors show fingerprints. This doesn't show it so much, but it's champagne gold, so to each their own. But overall, I like this machine for what it is. If I'm sitting around the house and I just wanna chill out and just browse the web and do some shopping, this is the laptop I'm going for. I'm not gonna go for my 16. I can do it on the 16, but that's for work. That's for pro work. This is for my daily usage. I'm gonna be traveling, I'm going on a train, I'm gonna go to visit some family or some friends, I'm going on a work trip, or I need to do Zoom calls or team calls. This is the machine. I will opt for because it's easy, it makes sense, and it handles everything I need to do in that world very, very well. Battery life is good pretty much all day. I Depends on my usage, of course, I push the brightness up on my displays more than others, but you will lose a little bit of battery on that regard, but overall, this has been a very good machine. I wish there were more ports, but the thing in it, I can say that about every Apple laptop. I wish there were more ports, but that's just me. Having said that though, we gotta talk about this machine for a second here, because does this machine mean the end of the 13 inch Pro line? I mean, if you look at it, it kind of makes sense, right? The Pro could start at the 14, and there's one right now, and it's fantastic. Pro 14, 16, 13 could be your MacBook Air, the laptop that you just need for your daily tasks, but the Pro version, that could be for the 14 and 16 because pros usually need a larger display. You know what I'm saying? So something to consider. I don't know. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. But if you're looking for the best configuration for the MacBook Air, as I mentioned earlier, let me talk to you about which I would choose. Now there's two versions in terms of the processor. You can do 10 core or eight core. Honestly speaking, if you're just doing medial tasks, eight core is more than adequate. You probably won't see much of a difference using the 10 core. Now in terms of unified RAM, this is where it gets tricky. Out of the box, it's eight gigabytes. Eight gigabytes will be okay but 16 gigabytes is more future-proof. If you're gonna keep your laptop for a few years, I would offer 16 gigabytes. Now, in terms of storage on this, this is where it's really tricky. 256 gigabytes is not a lot of storage if you're going to go into photos or video. That will fill up really, really quickly. If you are not going to go into photos and videos, then stick with 256. You're never going to see the performance improvement if you're just doing documents and saving documents, if you're just 
watching movies and media content, you're never gonna see it. But if you are gonna get into photos and videos, then I would opt to go to 512 at least. When we get into the power bricks, because there's very different power bricks that you can get into. You've got the dual USB-C port, 35 watt version of it, you get a 67 watt, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The one out of the box is pretty good, but if you want fast charging, I would opt for the 67 watt. I would forego the dual USB-C port uh, version. Why? For this reason. Most of us plug our power bricks into a wall or down by the floor, and we're usually sitting on a desk. That means there's, there's quite a bit of distance between your plug and where your laptop sits. If I'm going to plug in other USB-C devices into there, I have to now get a longer cable. Those are pretty expensive from Apple. Of course, you can go third party, but if you wanna buy a cable, that's another expense. And then again, are you gonna be able to reach? Is it gonna work with your desk situation? That's only something that you can answer. Personally, for me, I wouldn't do it because I would never use those ports. I would take that 67 watt charger, which I think 67 is really a good number to have because you can charge many devices with that. I can do my iPhone, iPad, MacBook Air, and whatever device I need, and you're gonna get fast charging. It's great for when you're traveling. You are going to be golden, and it's not that big compared to the larger versions out there. Anyway, those are the options I would go for. I would love to hear from you. Which MacBook Air version would you like to go for? Let me know in the comments section below. If you like this video, check out these awesome reviews from us right here.